Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Europa Universalis 4. We are here playing Rule Britannia, uh, with all thanks to Paradox for getting me a copy of that. And this is a continuation of the game which has gone up onto YouTube. So I pre-recorded an hour and a half of it, so it's three episodes, and that is the stage where we are right now. So uh, we've been building up Scotland slowly but surely. We've developed a very strong alliance, actually, with Denmark and with France. We've been trying to get an alliance with Aragon, although that's been difficult. Uh, and building up our military, uh, we fought one war against England, in which we took over Cumbria, Northumberland, Lancashire, York, and Scarborough. That was very recently. We've put them in, I think, 14 loans of debt. I was in four. No, I was in six, but the uh, money that I took off of them allowed me to repay three of them immediately, and we're currently rebuilding our economics. So, things are looking good. And hello, everyone. F. Melward, Poznik, Master Matt, Legit Player, Tuna, hey Tuna, Muljin, JT246, Cold Rage, Master Matt, hello, everyone. Good to see you all. Um, so, yeah, we've just finished uh, fighting this war. Uh, the Danes are actually kind of integral to the victory. They kept on launching attacks on the east coast while I was hitting them from the north. Uh, quite a lot of fighting in Ireland as well. Tyrone and obviously the Pale slash the King's County uh, were taken by England and our vassals. Ulad is my ally, although I don't know how long that's going to last. I was going to try and vassalize them. Not entirely sure how likely that's going to be, considering the economic base is way below them. Uh, in other news... We are way ahead of time in military. We've been investing very heavily in that. And that was part of the reason we were able to school England so hard. Also, England was just coming out of a war against Burgundy, which ended in a white peace. And, well, no. England had to pay money to Burgundy. Well, Burgundy didn't actually take any territory. Then I declared war. Denmark joined the war on my side. France had been fighting Brittany and Castile, so did not initially join the war. Uh, I waited until France had paid down enough of their debt, called them in as well. And uh, they occupied all of the territories over here. I gave them co for their efforts. We took the northern coast, and Denmark just joined because of favours. Hey, Helson. Playing Scotland on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Plays Royal Britannia, plays Scotland. Well, I was expecting everyone else to be playing England, because it's kind of the big country in Royal Britannia. Apparently, everyone else had the same thought. I'm hearing of a lot of different YouTubers and streamers also now playing Scotland. Uh, I was going to play as Keldalunt, or Kelra, as they're known here, uh, because that is where I'm actually from, and they've got their own idea tree, which is kind of cool now. I, yeah, it is ideas. I said it right. It's not a focus tree. Ah, I got it right this time. But uh, the Scottish have a unique mission system, uh, together with Britain and I think, sorry, together with England and I think some of the Irish, if not all of the Irish. Uh, so I wanted to see how the, the mission system in this works. So yeah, basically countries are getting their own focus tree, uh, which is an interesting idea. It's an interesting idea. Um, I just hope it doesn't uh, force you down a particular route. It doesn't seem to be. I mean, the rewards are nice, but they're not insane like the routes for going after England just gives you more claims on the rest of England which is pretty cool um, yeah the bonuses are nice but I wouldn't say they're absolutely integral and it'll be interesting to see how they expand that system for other nations with their ideas and things like that what's the next E4 let's play uh, probably will be Keldalunt either Keldalunt or the Knights because the thing which I love about this expansion is that they've increased the number of naval options so you now have a naval doctrine that you can select, for example. So currently, we are doing the wooden wall, which is only available to British powers. And it means that when you're fighting on the coast of any territory that you own, uh, you get combat bonuses, just plus one to all rolls. However, there are other options. For example, fleet in being, which is naval maintenance modifier reduction, which is quite nice. Yeah, free oarsman, which increases your galley combat ability. This is the one that I want to do with the knight, because I suspect that you can get something like 60% more, if not more than that, actually, uh, naval combat ability. Let me just double check what the uh, knight's galley is, because I do remember I played one knight's game before I was doing the YouTube thing and fighting the Ottomans, and, like, my 13 galleys beat the Ottoman navy of, like, 80. I mean, not all at once, which is kind of fighting piecemeal and hit and runs. 
But I beat the Ottoman Navy with an absolutely tiny but extremely elite one. Uh, so this would be Google E4 Knights. I just want to see if they still have that ridiculous idea which gives them loads of naval combat. Yeah, 20% galley combat ability, 15% chance of capturing enemy ships, and that's also going to play into this. And then the utterly ridiculous plus 50% naval force limit modifier. Like, as the knights, you can get a huge navy once you actually start taking some territory. Anyway, back to this. Uh, merchant navy plus 33% ship power. This is one of two ways, I think, which increases ship power. One, the other one being the age system. I think that's only for Venice. Yeah, it's this one. Ship trade power plus 50%. So Venice with that, and also the 33%. Oh boy, their light ships are going to be crazy. Um, which other ones am I looking at? Uh, chance to capture enemy ships, 33%. So you have more chance of capturing enemy ships. And I wonder if they've changed the ideas to allow that as well. Because I suspect that makes a lot of sense for espionage ideas. Because you're basically using privateers. And then naval combat bonus off of the owned coast. And like I said, that's only for the British powers. Are the Irish ideas any different? Never really liked them any, uh, that much. I suspect so. Can't see because Ireland hasn't actually been formed yet. The English ideas have changed. They've got... Okay, so the English ideas, they got rid of most of their naval ideas. Most of England's ideas are now to do with uh, land combat. Like fire, um, redcoats. Uh, the national idea, the redcoats, as it's called, uh, gives them more fire ability... Um, and I think they've lost, like, their heavy ship bonus. Yeah, see, infantry combat ability, plus 10%. Then redcoats is plus 10% uh, land fire ability. And a couple more things like that. So the English ideas have definitely changed. The Scottish ones have as well, though less so. Land force limit, plus 33%. Land shock, plus 1. Land maintenance, minus 5. That's the air capstone. Uh, national unrest minus one ship cost minus ten that's going to be very nice especially because I do think that I'm going to need to outproduce the English in terms of naval power plus 20% naval man uh, sorry national manpower is going to be great 10% uh, less stability cost 10% more tax legitimacy and then the aggressive expansion impact so the Scottish ones aren't amazing but that plus one leadership uh, plus one land leader shock plus plus one land leader shock from my general equals a five shock general <laughs> like just the first guy i rolled with no land tradition nothing like that just five shock general okay let's go toward the english it was great they removed all of england's naval related ideas a massive buff then uh, i i disagree part of the reason i adored playing england is because of the naval ideas so many people underrate the power of navies in this game this is one of the few strategy games where navies freaking matter especially when it comes to trade and dominating it I mean, just look at how I did in the Pale Pirates. Yes, I struggled early on to unite Ireland, and that should be easier now. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but then I could just bring people to their knees through the privateering and the piracy. Navies are so strong. And the fact that you can now uh, devastate enemy coastlines with um, blockades. You can destroy the war exhaustion again through blockades. Oh, naval power is so strong. So badly underestimated. And it's just getting better and better. Like, this expansion has a large chunk focused on navy power. Naval power. Um, right, what was I saying? Do, 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 do. Irish ideas. Don't know. Some of the Irish miners just had generic ideas. I think all of them are now specific. Ormond. Leinster. Desmond. Munster. Connacht, I know we already had. Sligonian. Yeah, so all of the Irish miners now have their own ideas. And also, you will notice that Ireland has been subdivided even further. I think Ireland's gained three new provinces. Scotland's gained a bunch. Like, the Highlands have been divided into Sutherland and Inverness. Uh, the Isles have been divided into the Outer Hebrides and the Inner Hebrides. Argyle was always there. I think Ayrshire has been divided between West March and Ayrshire. Then Lothane's been divided between Lothane and East March. The Isle of Man has been added. Uh, so Scotland is just significantly wealthier. And from the start of the game, I couldn't quite match England's military strength, but I was certainly a hell of a lot closer to it than we were previously. So I suspect we'll see Scotland surviving a good deal longer now. 
Can I show the goods produced menu to show where coal is? I didn't think that showed yet, does it? Oh, no, yes, I know what you mean. Goods produced. There we go. So anything which is uh, slashed lines like that, that's where coal is produced. So Ayrshire, Northumberland, Chester, Derby, and Glamorgan. Those are all coal producers. And then throughout the rest of the world, France has a little bit. Belgium's got a couple. Germany's got a few. Poland's got quite a lot. Oh, there's some more over there in Germany. And coming down here, a couple in the Balkans. Ooh, they lose their gold. Kosovo's gold becomes coal. Interesting. Black gold. No, that's oil. Russia doesn't have many. Turkey doesn't have any. So that might be part of the reason the Ottomans might dwindle in power later on. And I guess that's why they're kind of expecting Britain to become more powerful, because apparently coal is super, super valuable. Does Normandy have an extra province or two? Uh, yes. Though I'm not entirely sure how that's changed. This used to be just one whole province, didn't it? Con Alan Conan Cotentin. Yeah, so I think they've split Normandy into three. I feel like this is split. I don't remember a Vanate. I think this was all one province. Aquitaine, Laborde, those are the same. And then the Netherlands has changed. So, um, they've added more stuff in the Netherlands. So, the ne uh, Holland is still Amsterdam, Den Haag, Zeeland, which used to be Nord Holland, Zoot Holland. Was that all Holland? Did they always have two? No, there were a two. There now are three. Uh, Friesland, I think they've actually conquered some land, but they have Friesland, Groningen, and Overstrict. Overstrict was... was who was that owned by? I think that was a Helderland, actually. I think Helderland might have been a three. I think they were Helder, Overstrict, and then they have also down here uh, Upper Hilders. Ostfriesland, that was definitely independent, but that's also been taken over by the Frisians. Uh, Utrecht has fallen to the Frisians. Oh, Overstrict might have been Utrecht. Actually, then Brabant down here, Liège, Flanders. So yeah, they've they've subdivided uh, the Dutch a little bit as well. I think that was the two areas: is the uh, Low Countries and Britain. Saw the changes, and all of the Dutch miners now have idea groups, all of them. They're not just generic German anymore, which was always a bit weird. Content is new. Okay. Bapoitier under Maine wasn't there either. Ah, here. Yeah, you're right. Oh, Poitou. Sorry, that's not Poitier. Sorry. Tea time. We're playing as a British power. This is now a legitimate thing. Though it's always been a legitimate thing. Well, let's be honest. So, yeah, quite a few interesting changes. Uh, once the Industrial Revolution comes around, you can now build uh, industrial factory which uses coal, which is apparently like super valuable, as I mentioned. Uh, there are new CBs. Well, there's one new CB called Trade Steering, where you can force the person that you capitulate uh, to steer their trade towards you. So, for example, if you, as Austria capitulated Venice, then you can force the Venetian trade to go out of Venice in... No, wait. Venice is an end node. Never mind. Bad example. Uh, you could say if you as Denmark capitulated England, you could force the English to push the trade from the English Channel into Lübeck, for example. Who really cares about that? Oh. Oh. Not just water this time. No, this, this is actually a legit drink. <laughs> Do they do new things to release Wales? I think the Welsh, the Cornish, and the Northumbrians have focused uh, idea groups now as well. Real questions, have they buffed Ming this time? I don't know. I really hope they've nerfed Ming. 
or at least tweaked them, but I don't think they have. They haven't mentioned anything about it. Let me just have a very, very quick look at the release notes. Just see if there's anything I missed, because I'm pretty sure there is. Uh, we've seen those, done that. Anglicanism. So there is a new Protestant faith, which the will spawn in Britain somewhere, which increases innovativeness. That's the other thing I need to talk about. Uh, and also some other stuff. Um, don't know exactly how that works. I haven't seen any of that stuff yet. Obviously, because the Reformation hasn't happened. And then, as I touched on, there is now innovativeness, which is this icon right here. So, if you are ahead of time, you will develop innovativeness. If you are behind the times, i.e. if you have a neighbor uh, bonus, then you will lose innovativeness. If you are the first to research a technology, or if you get ideas, then you get more innovativeness. Um, so this is one way which tall nations, who tend to have a lot of uh, political power... Gah, stupid hearts of iron! Monarch points, then you can get more innovativeness, so the tall powers are basically generally going to be more technologically advanced, possibly even more so than they already have been up till now, than the big, sprawling, power-based nations. Um, so innovativeness is nice. It will reduce the power costs of everything. All power costs are reduced by a percentage, and you also get a yearly army tradition decay reduction and navy tradition decay reduction. So yeah, innovativeness is very powerful, and also I should say, if you have high innovativeness, then all your power points are reduced, power point costs are reduced, which means that you'll be getting further ahead in technology and thereby building up your innovativeness even more, so it's kind of a snowball. Which is interesting, like once you start gaining an edge, then that edge just should just continue to grow, depending on, of course, how your nation is doing. Uh, however, you lose innovativeness if you are behind the times with your neighbours, so if you fall behind, then that's going to be bad. And also, my favourite technique of allowing myself to fall behind so I get cheaper technologies is now less effective, because I'll be losing innovativeness while that's happening. So it actually pays off to be cutting-edge technology. So, it's an interesting balance there that they've introduced, which I quite like. You thought the English Channel was an endnote? No, it feeds into Lubeck. Oh, you're right. It is an endnote. It's Lubeck that feeds that way. Okay, so if you're playing as England, and you manage to piece out the Danes, you can force the Danes to feed trade into the English Channel. It's been a while, okay? <laughs> right, let's actually unpause and play this game. So we are literally just ending the uh, previous battle. I still need to core all of these, but I'm going to wait until war exhaustion goes down a bit. Uh, our army took a little bit of a beating. Wait, I was getting subsidies? Can't have been very much, because... Oh, it was. It was like two, uh, two ducats. Well, bugger. Hmm. Alright, so we've made friends with the Pope. I'm trying to build up my uh, papal influence so I can get some of these abilities. Okay, so that is going to go up. Does the Innovative Idea Group do anything regarding innovation? That's a good question. In fact, I have not looked at the Idea Groups at all. Why is the cost the same? Prestige, mercenary costs, institution embracement cost, tech cost, possible advisors, reduce inflation, exhaustion. No. Uh, the other thing I should point out is there is now the ability to do tech sharing. So if I were to go to, say, France... I don't actually know where this is located. There it is, offer knowledge sharing. So you can now sell technologies to... well, not sell, you can give technology power to other powers, um, but only generally if they're allied with you. So if you have someone who's significantly behind you in technology, you can, like, help build them up. Which, in the example they used, was Novgorod basically building up the hordes to act as a better counter against Muscovy. So there's some interesting uses for that. I haven't exactly seen it in power at all. And that's only if they're an institution behind you. It's not if they're individual technologies as an institution. So, if, for example, at the start of the game, someone hasn't embraced feudalism then you could use that to build up their institution level until they are also feudal. So I guess that's going to be more potent, like if France develops Renaissance, 
then I could say, hey, France, why don't you give me your technology? Or actually, if I got the Renaissance, I could go to France saying, hey, I got this new thing. It's called the Renaissance. You want it? Very intrigued that they have manned the Isles also. So, yes, the Isles actually start off as their own independent nations. They own the Outer Hebrides and the Inner Hebrides. Um, I was sorely tempted to play as them, but considering the amount of luck I've had as Scotland in the past, I didn't. And I'm kind of glad I didn't, because they actually start as a vassal of Scotland, hence they've already been annexed. So they're probably going to be one of the shortest lived nations in this game. But yes, you can indeed play as the Isles, and they have their own uh, national idea group as well. I believe Isle of Man does too, actually. So it's something that could be split away from England. So I guess that's something to try as play as England, split them away, and then play as the Isle of Man. Unrelated, but it was actually added to Japan in the Japan patch. I have no idea. Was that? When was the Japan patch? That was relatively recently, wasn't it? I totally forgot that that one even came out. Because, yeah, it wasn't just Japan, it was um, Indonesia as well. There's an achievement to get all the islands in the world as man. Oh, yeah, that's the Imperium of Man, isn't it? 40k flavoured one. Nice. Okay, so I am actually losing money, which upsets me. State maintenance, interest. Slight problem. I could turn off the fort for the time being. Because I have a truce with England. They're not going to attack me anytime particularly soon. Because I really want to pay off my loans. Alright, let's reduce the army maintenance. Let's also stop rooting out corruption. There we go. Now we're making money. And the estates want control. Of course they do. 1% each. Grr. Right, so have I given this to someone? I have. Curses. Now I'm taking the more and more wealthy territories in the south. They're going to be like, hey, give me some stuff. And I'll be like, oh. That's wool and coal. I don't really want to give you that one. Here we go. I can give Cumbria to one of them. Cumbria can go to the clergy. Giving Lancashire away. Lancashire is clearly a crown territory. West March. Oh, but you are super valuable. Alright, nobility. No, no. You've got 19%. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to strip some of these away from the clergy. Don't rise up. Good. Nobility can have it instead. There we go. Problem solved. England caught my guy over there. That's unfortunate. Alright, so I've still got a diplomat free. Uh, you guys chill. I think I want to improve relations with Aragon again. Now, as someone in the comments for YouTube mentioned, I was trying to get an alliance with Aragon, and then suddenly my chance of getting an alliance plummeted, and that's because I annexed um, the Isles. So my diplomatic reputation went down. Yeah, Scottish diplomatic reputation, minus 13. So that will improve. So we're not as far away as I initially thought we were. Which is good. Ooh, I have a cardinal. Nice. That's going to quite dramatically increase the amount of papal influence I get. And I have another discipline guy. Blimey, I have plus 10 discipline right now. Because my advisor, my very, very expensive advisor is a plus five discipline. Nice. Anatomical theatre. Local doctors in Jedburgh have begun to pay good money to study fresh corpses. The physicians claim this allows them to improve their knowledge of the human body, documenting it for the betterment of mankind. Improving the grasp of human anatomy is not an argument that impresses locals when the graves are recently deceased are found open in the morning, however. The citizens of Jedburgh are now demanding that we restrict these horrible practices, then we put a stop to the grave robbers. So reprimand and restrict them, we lose innovativeness. Uh, local unrest, or we gain innovativeness but lose prestige. And we have unrest for 10 years. Or unrest for 5 years. Uh, Scottish marches, plus five. 
Oh, this is the area. So this is going to be this whole area. Hmm. Unrest is going to be an issue here for a while. So you know what? Oh, that's just one innovativeness, which I will be losing over time eventually. Actually, I'm gaining it right now. You know what? We're going to do it. Let us embrace these new ideas and work with them to secure those corpses. Alright, so unrest is a problem there. Can I do the autonomy thing? I could. You know what? I'm going to double down. That is totally the wrong button. God damn it. I was meant to be pressing these. Alright, so you can go down, you can go down. I didn't mean to do the other ones. Oh well. Yeah, that'll cost me. Tyrone are trying to take my stuff. Not very nice, Tyrone. All right, of course, the plus increases autonomy. It doesn't decrease it. I'm an idiot. Uh, Austria have decided to accept the offer of knowledge sharing from Ferrara. Ah, so here we go. So Ferrara is Renaissance already because Renaissance has appeared and they are now sharing that technology with Austria. Uh, so if we look at the institutions, yeah, much of Italy has it. So could I go to the Pope and say, yo, Pope? Oh, that's only offer. Can I request it? No. They have to offer it to us. So what I should probably do is try and buddy up with the Italians, and then maybe they'll give it to me. Oops. Cancel that one. I'm going to go and try and beef up my relations with, like, Florence. Maybe Genoa would be a better option. Genoa would be a better option. Hang on. Is Genoa a rival with anyone I care about? Uh, you are rivaled by the Pope. Gen Florence is a better option. Okay. Will I go Anglican this time to see the new religion? Probably. Although that might only be available to England. I don't know if Scotland can, because historically Scotland have uh, reformed. They were Calvinist. And that's why there's always been good relations between the Netherlands and Scotland, because the Netherlands has also reformed. Uh, rumor is spreading Ragusa, starting Bosnia. How is the war exhaustion looking? No, the ones that are lower, we're going to go ahead and do. We'll wait a bit on Northumberland. Okay, so Aragon's at full relations. And they're still going to be a ways off. So how long until I lose my debuff? Two more years. Okay, that's fine. In that case, let's start improving relations with Venice. Venice doesn't hate anyone I hate. Good. Improve relations with you. England's having revolt problems, which makes me extremely happy. Oh my Dave, just joined. What you miss? Uh... You missed the rise of Scotland as a major world power. Scotland gets national epic. Yes, do that. Although I am going to be watching my money with a little bit of concern. Although we're losing only a, a tiny, tiny amount. I'm also kind of watching the fact that I'm getting uh, rebels rising because my army is not massive at the moment. I really should start trying to get more troops in my armies. So we're going to do that. I'm hoping once these accords that we'll start making rather more money as well. So let's continue reinforce. You know that could be a way as an Asian nation to fight Ming, get tech support from outside powers. True, but Ming could also do it. And actually the innovativeness thing should help against Ming because they're going to struggle to keep it up. I think. Oh wow, they are having some serious rebel problems. I couldn't be happier. And they apparently were just capitulated by them. So what happened? Did you get overthrown? No. Queen Elizabeth I. It's only a 4-1-1. One, one. Clearly not Elizabeth Tudor then. Although it is of the right house, of Lancaster are the choosers. Is that true? That's not true. I, I just spoke rubbish. 